Welcome back to the 2014 World Championship and Game 5 between Starhorn Royal Club and Edward Gaming. Edward Gaming fought back from an early two-game deficit to tie up the series. Hey guys, welcome back to the 2014 World, Get World Championship. We're into Game 5 as the series is tied up at 2-2-2. Two -two -two. Freak, before we get into the game, we've been discussing the top laners and a bit of focus between Koro and Kola. Uh, throw some numbers at me and talk to me about what you're noticing. Yeah, so honestly, I think they need to get Rise back here on Kola. When he's not on Rise from Starhorn Royal Club, he's 6, 17, and 19. His Aureli especially was pretty bad getting camped on. And throughout the actual group stage, um, <clears throat> these solo laners of Starhorn Royal Club each accounted for less than 20% of the damage dealt um, a from their team. No other mid laner had been that low, and most top laners were above that point as well. So uh, Cola, I think, especially needs to step up. His rumble was all right. I think you go back on that one. At least you can be useful somewhat. Meanwhile, Koro, he's done great. Koro over there on the other side for uh, EDG has done just fine. He's gotten Rise a whole bunch of times. They're prioritizing that champion for him, and he's doing pretty much stellar. Now, we are going to game five. Top laners have been impactful. AD carries have been impactful. We've seen mid laners rising and falling differently. I want to find out who you think is going to win this game and why. Kripa, you were siding the Starhorn Royal Club at the beginning of the day. They've just lost two back-to-back. -back. Who is your winner? Well, first of all, I just want to point out that everybody's right, so it's going to game five, so there are no losers in this prediction Touché. game. Touche. In case I lose. Except for maybe <laughs> you and me. Yeah. I just want to get that out. Anyways, <laughs> um, on, on point here. Um, I think either it could be both teams. Honestly, if Royal Club figures out where they need to put their jungler to do the maximum efficiency, they can win. But at the same time, like if EDG plays like they've been playing, like their mental fortitude is so impressing. They were 0-2 down, they s kept playing their style, they went a little more early game oriented and they kept stomping the early game so hard and ended up winning it. It could be either one. If I have to choose, just for simplicity's sake, I'll stick to my prediction of the start of the game and I'll be uh, going for Royal Club. Uh, you talk of mental fortitude and I completely agree. That's super important. And you saw Uzi after the game didn't rejoin his team. That is such a bad uh, mindset to be having, like, oh, I just need time to myself. I can't, I can't listen to anyone else right now. He is the best performing player on his team by a long shot, but he needs to kind of group with his team and say, look, you guys aren't playing so well, but that's okay. You just need to go even in lane with these certain champions and I'll just carry you. That's <laughs> honestly the best mentality you approach this because Cola and Korn are not playing well right now, and he needs to, they need to accept that. Double lift, who's winning again? Oh, Final sorry. Uh, the I'm going st to stick with... My original prediction, Edward Gaming. Edward Gaming, for Finally, simplicity's sake. Freak, keep it short as we move over to the Costas. Yep, I still think Starhorn Royal Club, I think they can fix something in Vans, either get a Rise early or a Lucian early that's been prioritized as well. But EDG, take one of the power picks away, get an early game lead, get your people uncomfortable champions. Yeah, I feel that is very, very important. Let's send it over to the Costas to find out how they play out the picks and bands in this game five. Thank you very much, guys. And what's about to happen is, I think, anyone's guess right now. 2-0 lead for Royal Club. It's now 2-2. Uzi looking devastated at the end there, not joining the rest of his team backstage to talk about what they're going to do in Game 5. And he must be just thinking right now, it's time for me to step yeah. up here big time and carry this one through. I mean, no matter what happens, win or lose, that moment is going to be looked back on with a lot of eyes because if they win, it's like, wow. He just focused himself, yeah. it was all about him, and he carried. Because that would ha that's what has to happen for Royal Club Loses. If it's not, though, it's the team just falling apart, lack of communication, lack of trust, and that would be the way the cookie crumbles. Well, guys, the one word that keeps getting referenced in any of these sentences and any of this analysis is team. And that's what it takes to win. Even yep. if you're the one carrying the game, there was still help from the four behind you. Both teams have to come together now for game five to keep themselves alive. I mean, I remember a really critical moment in the game three when Uzi actually took a culling for Insect. And that may have been the moment that the team started stopped playing together. So just a quick update of the bands right now not coming up, but I'll tell you for the blue side of Sound Royal Club, Maokai, Alistair, and a change to ban Lucian out here. Yep. On the other side for EDG, they've gone with Rengar, Zillion, and Fizz. So Maokai, Alistair, Lucian, Rengar, Zillion, Fizz, first pick rise for Cola. Yeah, and that was the big question. Would they actually use that blue side first pick to pick Rise. I'm actually very surprised that EDG decided against banning it because honestly, Korn's Fizz, which was banned by the way, sorry for the visual bug on the champion select screen, Fizz, Zillion, Rengar, again the banned champions for Edward Gaming, that they didn't ban Rise because I don't think Clear Love wants to play Lee Sin. Now they end up giving Rise and Lee Sin over to Royal Club. Could be big plays 
Taking the Twitch away, possibly making sure Uzi does not get that, and they will. Nami says, give me this, but that Lucian is now left up for Uzi. Not required to take it since they see the AD carry they're going up against. What is Insect now on? His Lee Sin was missing quite a bit. Wasn't in coordination. It is comfort. Does he fall back to it? I feel like he has to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he will. I mean, we're talking about Insect here. And, you know, what, whatever he's done in the past, he can always come up big on Lee Sin. That's right. He can always do it. Jonathan. Wow. wow. Uh, I'm so surprised. Carbon. Mind game in themselves. He obviously hadn't performed amazingly well on Lee Sin, right. but like against Twitch, Lee Sin is amazing. Twitch opens up Reveal. a singular place. The reveal, if he tries to run away, yeah. the fact he can kick him back. Here, they have the all-in potential of a Jarvan Cataclysm plus an Orianna ult, which is nice. But his Jarvan honestly hasn't looked that good when I've seen it. Definitely not in these group stages to come out here. He will try to play it. Once they do find the Twitch, they'll be able to lock him up. But if the Flash is up, he's out. And he's rat a tat tat and right back at them, stuck in their own Cataclysm. We'll still see the picks coming out. They're going to be a lot of safety for Rumble Ultimate to go down or engage a fight if necessary. Let's see this come in. Does Uzi go back to a super late game? They need the mid game. That's where everything's been happening. Our longest game hasn't even really hit 40. I think so. I think the Trist is the needed pick here because they are able to get Janna back again. Mm, the Orianna true. can still make it form. Rise should be able to control the top lane for them. The, the lanes themselves will not get crushed to the point that they had in the previous games. And especially with Twitch on the other side, EDG is going to have that lackadaisical laning phase as well, so this game could actually stretch for them. And they have the protection to all be bodyguards for Uzi and let him carry the game. Back to Insect, 5-1 and one in LPL and playoffs with Jarvan. It's actually a pretty good record. It's a good record for him. I fear, though, if this Syndra gets locked in, if that Jarvan doesn't get rolled, if he doesn't get tanky quick enough, you're going to get stunned and you're going to get blown up before you yep. do anything. You're going to be left with a Cataclysm down on the floor, which Twitch might say, yep. thank you very much, spray and pray through. Janna was the support pick here, 4-0. We've already seen him on that. And you, once again, will pick up Syndra. Game three with Syndra yeah. got them the win. Breakout champion of this series breakout champion of the split for you in the summer this year they have the nice double ap a ton of line damage when you think about rumble syndra and twitch it will be very critical that royal club is able to flank properly and close down adequately onto them these are very explosive compositions so we like to see game five it's going to put it all on the line and somebody's going to have to come out more explosive as we said before edg has done it just gradually and last time with safeness in the beginning, the way they like to play it, but then they turned it up a notch. There was no tricks, there was no buff steals. They were just able to win it through solid play. I don't know what these guys feel. I'm actually really nervous for both of them <laughs> at this point. It was 2-0, almost two, two easy wins for Royal yeah. Club, and I thought 3-0, this one's gonna be, you know, early bath and bed for EDG, but yeah. they've managed to turn this around. We're going into game five, and while we do, Load into that final game in this series. Make sure you guys tweet who you think will advance with the hashtag SHR win or EDG win to us here at LOL Esports. I'm honestly not sure which way this one's gonna go. The momentum in this matchup, I'm, you know, yeah. talk all the time, is momentum a real thing? For me, it is, it always has been. And to be 2-0 up and lose two games in a row is a massive problem for Royal Club coming into game five. And it's even more momentum than losing the first two games because that in itself was a miraculous accomplishment for EDG to bring it back to this. But as far as the team compositions, and I'm gonna go all the way back to our featured matchup. Yeah. This composition is built around Uzi. And even though EDG has Name on Twitch, it's not built around Twitch. They have more power in their soul winners to do their own things. And it's going to be EDG as a team or Uzi as himself. You, same thing once again. Doesn't matter about the clockwork wind up. He'll be all right. He'll be able to heal up in sec as usual. Messing around with clear love. Having a dance, having a taunt. Could be some trouble oh, here. Oh, Uzi getting hooked here very early on. This could be someone has burnt. Ignite's already down. Uzi jumps away, gets the shield. 
from zero. And that is not the start the Royal Club wanted. No. We talk about Uzi gathering himself after that last game. That is not the way you want to start. Not only does he have to burn his flash, he also has to burn his first skill point onto Rocket Jump, which means if Royal Club actually wants to lane swap and push fast, they will be pushing slow because he does not have explosive shot early on. Well, there's already a trick up EDG's sleeve that they were able to get onto the table. That is absolutely putting a smile on Name's face as we saw it just happen. The camera was on him and he was giving some sound words to his team with a smile there. So they're going to push that advantage as much as they can. He already went in and placed a very deep work towards that red buff. So they have knowledge of when Insect's going to be down there and how much pressure he's going to be putting on that bottom lane. A great start for EDG so far. We've seen the game go both oh, no. ways. This oh, well. could be interesting. They've seen them yeah. coming. There's only two there, though. So EDG actually backing off from that. And you know, Royal Club doing that one somewhat blind. They had no wards on their bottom side that would have spotted them coming down the ramp and through that tri bush. Either way, for Uzi, that rocket jump actually might not hurt him, but they're going to have to either freeze this lane or wait for the uh, explosive shot a little bit later. And I honestly think for both teams, the nerves coming in a little bit right there. I think after. EDG catches Uzi in the bottom lane, they should be able to predict the lane swap, which would predict the invade. And they actually have to do a slow reaction. Clear Love now taking his first buff two minutes and 30 seconds into the game. So about 30 seconds late on his jungle start, it's going to diminish his early game pressure. Some pings going down for Korn. They're saying watch out from them coming from red buff. This is what both teams have tried to do. I think they're gonna go back on this one. Just take the blues as usual and we'll have Koro and Cola trying to pick up a bit of experience with the junglers along the way. We haven't had this fully happen for both junglers just yet. They usually spread out a little bit earlier, so we'll see how this puts them behind. We're definitely going to see Koro with that ultimate being a little more effective in this manner. And Cola still trying to charge up when he gets the lane. Oh man. Yeah. For Royal you want Club that in the top lane. So fast. And this could be one of the main reasons that they picked Jarvin. He's granting attack speed now to everyone who is hitting that turret to make it happen much faster. Again, EDG trying to trade that early dragon. It's not like Royal Club can stop it. I wonder if Royal Club tries to take two in the top lane. Gotta juggle this one, right? Koro's only level one. Taking a couple of hits there from the dragon. And the turret does go down on the top side. You can see They're the dragon it now. all confused here. As he tries to go for Koro, who backs away in the nick of time. This dragon is going to be going down. And that will give us a one turret for one dragon difference in the early stages here of game five. The difference in gold after that is actually about 150 at this point, the way that they're ticking over. Yeah, they took a really long time on that turret and Royal Club was able to stick around for the extra waves in the lane. So that wasn't actually the greatest of trades by EDG there. They're still not completely crisp on that dragon aggro swapping. Mind you, it's really difficult to do for the duration of time that it took them to kill that dragon, but it still does hurt them a little bit, not bouncing it properly. So back from Korn in the mid lane as we see Uzi getting himself farmed up safely in the bottom. He does have that, ex he actually has not taken that explosive shot for himself. Is sitting on a skill right now to be used. It looks like he'll actually hold that for a while to keep it frozen. He'll probably be holding his next few skills to keep that happening. A little bit of an invade, or not rather an invade, but a help on the white coming still from that top lane. Cola not feeling it's going to be safe to go anywhere by himself, but Koro means he's going to be picking up all that siesta himself in that top lane, and it's not going to be a bad thing because the wave will still pretty much be evened out after this to farm that once he gets wards down. And it's actually a really good early game for Cola. He stuck around for a lot of lane experience. Insects shared a lot of his jungle with him, and the top lane is positioned in such a way that a monstrous wave will be hitting pretty soon towards Cola's turret, and he should be able to safely farm that. So a pretty good rise game here early with the tier already completed. And if we look at farm across the board, actually rather even, 35 to 39 mid, just a few CS in that bottom lane, the top lane remains pretty much even, at least until Cola gets that wave. Here comes the hook, but it goes straight down the middle and not causing any problems, at least for now for Royal Club. However, watch for the Lantern because Clear Love is coming. This could be a Lantern gank once that hook comes off cooldown. Well, maybe a little bit of early aggression from Name to say, hey, it's completely safe. And then they hold it and then they go aggressive. Almost worked on that one. Uzi definitely getting a little bit of game sense that it was going to happen. 
they keep it safe. Also, Insect was right there to be on the tail end. Yeah, pretty trying times. You can see the tension in this game is a little bit higher than in the other ones. Obviously, though, Uzi able to play safe. Everyone was willing to collapse down on that bottom line. They know how important Uzi's Trist is in this game. If he gets a little bit fed because of the Ori and Janna, they could start pulling this death ball strategy with a really fed Trist pretty well. And they haven't really been able to shut him down as of yet. And specifically, they haven't been able to take any other advantages either. So this slow, methodical early game, this game is playing into the favor of Royal Club. Time to step up in tech. He's waiting inside of that bottom brush for someone to come around. Clear Love is on the top side of his jungle. Insect is actually now recalling, so it doesn't look like there'll be too much going on there. Caller's trying to keep this wave on his side of that top lane, and as such, has gained a 10 CS lead as well. You keeping it safe in the mid. Corn. we said he'd fall behind a little bit at 10. He's been keeping it pretty safe in these games. A little try from the brush control from Koro. Cola does take the damage, and he can't really trade just yet. Keeps it safe in the farm phase. 10 CS up, as we said before. Not too much pressure actually coming from the junglers this time around. Clear Love not on that Eve is definitely taking his time to farm up a little bit more. I'm so happy about this series, the way it's played out, and the fact that this game as well in game five is the closest early game we've seen. It's almost like there's been an absolutely equal amount of bounce back from Royal Club. I really wonder the first blood that is drawn, how much that will snowball just because of how much is on the line for these teams. Whew. Being silenced out there, causing a little bit of trouble for Koro. Thought he had a, a bit of help from Clear Love, but didn't realize he was very, very low. That could have been a bad situation, but it comes out all right. See Korn trying to get the upper hand on you as he comes back to lane. But we're still definitely seeing a much more patient game from both teams. With everything on the line, it's a nobody wants to lose situation. So you're going to see that safe play. And speaking of safe play, we're so used to seeing the Trist or the Twitch lane swap for the safe late game lane. Mm -hmm. But they both want to do that. So when they actually match up in lane, it ends up being pretty even here. And it's going to be on the mechanics of these guys to try and pull something off. FCZF obviously has more of the ability to go aggressive if he can land a few good death sentences. Start. I think eight and a half minutes may have been the longest we've been waiting for a first blood in this best of five. I mean, these guys are already four hours into this best of five. I mean, yeah. the stamina it requires and the focus it requires as well to not have made that deadly mistake as of yet is honestly a testament considering how aggressive these teams normally play. FCZF trying to thread the needle there and just fits it through past the caster minion, but Uzi's able to dodge out. He is level six along with Name. Definitely the ability to disengage from Royal Club in this bottom lane is there. Calling Gales, almost the monsoon up for zero. So if they get into any trouble, they'll be safe. And it looks like trouble's headed their way. Yep, will the lantern, well, there's my answer to that one. <laughs> lantern down for the shield means no lantern to the back for Clear Love, at least for now. They tried it with the flash from FCZF earlier into Flay, didn't work. But yeah. this time they're on the tower. It's kind of classic Uzi from the group stage. In the group stage, they're almost always pushed up to their opponent turret, almost daring a gank to come. It's not like they're prepared for it. They don't have very good ward coverage, but they do have a level six Janna and a Trist, multiple knockbacks. I feel like they are confident that even if the Kazakhs came, they could blow them away. There's a lot of love for this bottom lane right now, and wards aren't really telling that. Dragon also coming up at this point. It looks like you and Korn are going to see that right in the river. Insect also being seen there, so I think everybody's going to hold off for a bit. Play that one a bit more safe. Very cautious and risk-averse coming in from both teams. A change from every game we've seen right now. The first person to get a kill, they're probably going to start putting their foot down and going very, very hard. Already you trying to bully out Korn, and he's been having a much better lane in that mid. Well, that's the funny thing, that last game where you might have expected EDG to try to be, uh, sorry, uh, Royal Club to be making moves. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they played that standard kind of laning phase out, ended up behind, never really came back. This time though, they've got a composition where actually they could do that. Yeah, they would want to play the lanes out, and this time they're keeping the gold pretty even while doing so as well. You can actually see in almost all of their map movements, they are preempting EDG's aggression in the bottom lane and just dissuading them from it. They see a Jarman, or they 
notice that the Orianna is mimicking Rome, and they just never try to shut Uzi down. With all that, he just keeps farming and farming and farming. Very interesting for the game to flow in favor of this style, something EDG played all year long, safe in the lanes. Royal Club's gonna have to get an edge on this one soon if they really wanna make an impact. Koro not gonna get anything out of this one as they're just kinda waiting around for a game. And I have to point out Uzi's item build. Normally on Trist, when you're farming in the lane, you want a pickaxe to go with your Avers Blade. But he was so unpressured in that lane, he stuck around long enough to get a BF sword and an Avers Blade. So he is much stronger than many Trists are at this point in the game. Uh, Insect was waiting inside of that bottom brush on the river. And well, as soon as Zero comes over and scans it, they realize exactly why nothing's happening for them. Actually, another ward was put down just as they left that brush, so Vision maintained on that area of the map for EDG. Once again, you see CZF just putting that lantern behind them, automatically forces Uzi and Zero a couple of paces back for fear of that Kha'Zix coming in. Had a ping on the mid lane, and we see Insect hovering just behind his red, deciding, is that going to be for you, mm. or are we actually going to go to this bottom lane? He seems to be wavering quite a bit on that decision. The first time in the game that the aggression has not been preempted by Royal Club. They have no mid lane or jungle support, but it is a potential for people from EDG. I feel like FCZF may have given it away there by placing the forward ward. He would not have done that unless he had backup, because of how frequently Uzi was shoving and willing to trade. That means that you and Cleelove will simply back off Horn, however, he does get a bit of a beat in there. Is Cleelove diving in? Oh, Insect appears from nowhere, but he's going to have to flash, and there's the damage with the Ignite from you to claim first blood for EDG. Oh, and a stun on Insect! Wait a minute, Insect, that could be a red buff going over now to EDG. Zero's going to be there for the shield as he makes a very nice roam up to save the rear of Insect. I wonder how this is going to affect the rest of Royal Club. EDG draws first blood in the mid lane and it goes on to you. That gives them dragon control and that can potentially give them control of bottom lane as well if you can punish that enough and start transitioning his lead. Just like game four, a lane lead they pull out for themselves. No tricky buff takes. It's going to be theirs and they are going to start that with a just about 2,000 gold lead. Uzi still farming up, and he doesn't have that much pressure over Name right now, even from leaving lane. These guys have been keeping each other quite down in that CS. Now he certainly doesn't play to the Rune King. He's done yeah. for Name. I'll give him some confidence coming in. Luwoff will be given over to Korn, who's got that Athene's finished off, as is the case with you. Just slightly ahead on the boots front with those Sorcerer shoes already finished. He will also be getting himself that blue buff helped out at the start by Cleelo. So that top lane, again, being relatively quiet after uh, the initial four-man push up there from Royal Club. Looks like mid lane could be the target, but they've gone past the ward that was inside of the death rush, so they should know that one's going on as the box has put down. TP coming in here at the back, but they've got a ward, they're going to see it. Well, there's the land. Oh, man. Oh, brilliant Howling Gale will stop it in its tracks. That's another one of those teleports that I'm very surprised wasn't cancelled because Uzi and Zero were very disengaged at the time of it. Maybe they thought the lantern was going to be able to put it down, but now he has to walk all the way back up to that lane while Cola is just farming. That's another reason Uzi and Zero were so safe in that lane, because they knew all the knockbacks that they had. Six vision wards in the inventory now, but it's about to hook. They get the exhaust on Aname. Here comes Cola's teleport. Go the way on canceled that one. it. That's the play. That's what he's supposed to do if they've already escaped the gank. Yes, they didn't want to have that to happen because they didn't expect the lantern to come in. But I wonder if he's actually pushed too far now. Let's see the chase. Yeah, this could be dangerous for him. Clear love red buff on will pop the ultimate. And he's gonna oh, go dear. chasing. They know that Cole is in those rushes somewhere. He just spots him. Slow comes down, equalizer as well. Can Kohler escape? He gets the room prison in there. Slow from the harpoon, and Coro burns him down. EDG taking advantages on every other part of the map. Again, Uzi barely escapes death. Kills on the solo lanes now. Perfect for the objective fights for EDG to come in here. That's going to be great for Koro. He's already got the haunting guys and his boots finished. Kola will come back with the Rod of Ages charging up. So you can see Uzi and Zero clearing out, being safe. Also trying to get some plays made here, but no bite from EDG. And when I was researching this series, even though all the attention is on Name versus yep. Uzi, 
I noticed that EDG's solo lanes could have a pretty big advantage over Royal Club solo lanes, specifically in the group stage. Yu was plus nine CS at 10 over his opponents. Korn on the other side was minus five. There was a similar but not quite as pronounced discrepancy in the top lane. And when EDG has won in these games, it has not been through Name versus Uzi. Uzi has pretty much held his ground. But when the other members of EDG, when the team of EDG can outperform, has when they have has been when they have been successful. And that is happening again this game. Clear Love setting up the top and mid lane, not the bottom lane, and that is what's working for EDG. One almost, but not quite cleared out. It's Koro once again. Just waits inside of that brush. Clear Love, where's he going now? Into the Royal Club jungle. And put a ward over the top of the wall, and that will see that Cole has gone means that Koro can actually push that lane up, should he so wish. That turret behind Kohler though still stands and Corny's still quite staunchly defending these pink wards. Talking about clear love a bit, knowing the community kind of gets on his case from not showing the same aggressive play he does in scrims, in solo queue. Seems like he's found himself here on the stage now, able to get that tempered aggression out and get yeah. the aggressive plays just straight in. And there's one from Insect on to Clear Love, finding him straight out as he clears a pink. That'll be great for him. Turret's gonna go down to the bottom lane, pushed away is Name. So that's easy. I couldn't really get a handle on that one either. And honestly, Clear Love has stepped up in this yeah. series in a huge way. He's been one of the biggest proponents in both of their victories. FCZF as well has been able to find some amazing catches. Honestly, the EDG as a team has been able to stand strong, not necessarily Name. Name has been playing solid. Nothing spectacular what he needs to do to defend the rest of the team, but honestly, he does just what he needs to do to win. Three straight LPL splits. Yeah. Uzi as well, off in that side lane while the other four members try and stall for him. Got his static shift, so he'll be pushing those waves pretty quickly. BF sword, long sword, on top of that. We've seen armies move down towards that bottom lane, but I don't think there's any attack on the cards. We do, though, have a dragon on its way up in just under one minute's time. There was a bit of a flag toss going down. Halony Gale following it through, but they're just jockeying for position here, trying to get some of those early wards onto the top side of river. And as far as which team has better dragon control, it is EG, it is EDG by a country mile. Rumble with double magic pen, Syndra catches, Thresh catches, a stealthed AD carry, as well as some deep wards into Royal Club's jungle. If they know what's good for them, they give that dragon up. Pink wards around mid to make sure Korn doesn't go down anymore, thinking Nami is gonna start going on some missions with a lantern to get him out if anything goes wrong. Blue buff's gonna go over here. Perfect time for Dragon as well. These are gonna be some powerful attacks. Oh man, Clear Love actually taking that one for himself. A bit of the burn on the Lizard Elder. Not ideal, especially because Cinder is already at half mana, so yeah. can't do much poking there with Cinder unless they just start the Dragon straight off. Well, I think that they possibly will here. EDG do start it now, mate. That will bring the dragon out of its pit, but they've set up a bit of a death brush. Insect coming a little close there, and there is the flag and drag away from the action. Dragon has reset. Might mean you have to walk in for this one. Flag and drag will come up quickly, though. There's Name. These are the plays they want. It's going to go onto a pink one, though. Shockwave hit. They find Name. They almost lock him down, but he's not going to be hit up. Yes, he finally goes down to the burn. The fight continues. Koro now onto zero, but he gets monsooned away right into the team. What an ultimate coming in from zero. And that's going to stop the dragon for now. Two down for EDG. Name has been questioned for his positioning ever since he stepped foot on the world stage here. And again, he pops up at the wrong time, tries to get the catch, gets Shockwave, and costs his team a dragon, which by all means, they had full control over. And now Royal Club has the edge. And now Royal Club might be looking to push his mid lane down. You might have to just back away and leave it. Let's have a look. He's already down to half. Uzi will tank it up with the help of the shield. They're going to finish it off the TP. He, it he will come through. Uzi now going to be locked onto by Clearlock. He's already used the jump. Will flash actually as well from that. It's a double kill coming down as Korn and Zero both die. 
great lockdown of the fight. Focus from the team. They're probably going to drag, grab this turret off of it, but EDG not letting just Dragon happen. They come back immediately and return to the fight. I mean, they might want to take two after this one. There's still some death timers on the corn and zero. Really a nice counterattack. Let's see if they can secure this next turret. No reason they shouldn't be. We said they had the item Whoa. spikes and they knew it coming back in. Able to just fiercely push off the rest of the team. Uzi and Cola doing what they can from range, but Tristana has not gotten the range necessary yet at level 11. We're looking for that later, and EDG takes advantage and another turret. Four to 1,000 gold, just a little less than even, is what separates the two teams. Ah, Scan's not going to see the pink wall, unfortunately. Yeah. Somebody walked through it, though. Oh, oh nope. they can find one. Nope. Uzi did. Yep. Nope. He's not looking at it. Yep. Nope. Smart pinks, yep. guys. Wow. <laughs> well, that is really unfortunate now, for now them. Now they'll see it, though. Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what All is right. going on here? For oh, this is, this is interesting. Taking Baron damage there. Oh, that pink ward. Surely. How? Surely they will see it soon. One would say. That guy, that pink ward, return on investment, is huge right now. <laughs> so that's going to stay alive. The Deathbrush Baron side is playing a huge role here. Sixth member of the team so far for EDG. And they're not worried at all. They're just doing what they want on their side of the jungle. They did set up for a little bit thinking that Royal Club was going to try and take something sneaky. But they're able to get as much clearing now as they want to get these lanes pushed up. They're having a grand old time. Only sitting a thousand gold ahead, but once they've been ahead, they've been able to keep that lead. Yeah, that's for sure. However, they did give up that catch around Dragon Pit. Name yeah, that's just true. not opening up in the right spots, and that's one thing about a Jarvan Orianna pick against a Twitch. The instant you see that Twitch pop up, there's no Kale to save him yeah. in these situations. He will get jumped on and really, really bursted. So that is a real danger for Name having to play around that. A lot of wards around Baron now. 23 minutes in Name. What is he thinking of? Starting to edge forward, but stealth will run out in the end. Just been a venom flash thrown through. But there are four men there from EDG. We can make that five now as you will join in as well. They have five men on that top side. Finally going to go around to clear out a couple of wards and they're going for Name. He's been caught out again here. Can he escape it? He's safe though. Going to be burst down. Koro might be able to escape. Three man drop wave. Hook on to Korn. FTZ goes through, but he will go down. Is this the turnaround that they're looking for? Korn still trying. There's the jump. So He's going for Koro. Blows him away. Gets the kill. Gets the reset. Uzi. Is he going to die? He stays alive here. And now they're going to keep going. You. He will surely. No, he can walk away. It's a messy, messy four for three. Uzi is a walking god of League of Legends as far as this is concerned. Jumping in to that many people and surviving once again. No one gets hit by the stun and you just reveal himself to Uzi. So far as time alone playing in his favor. One more shot and Uzi picks up 3-0-3. Three, three. Solidifying another kill, bringing the game to 7-7. Seven to seven, And the thousand gold lead is now in favor of Royal Club. That fight started so heavily in the favor of EDG, but like these teams uh -oh. go, it's not over yet. Teleport, here comes Koro, speeding it out. Oh. Uzi going for FTZF. This time he won't be alive for long, though. And that is the kill for Koro. Puts him to 2-2-3. Two, two, Crazy fights this on the top five. side of the map. This game five is delivering upon all of the expectations. 5-1 for you. Uzi as well doing some big things. And yeah, this initiation is what Royal Club thinks they want. They get the ultimate on Aname. However, because he positions himself at the back of the Cataclysm, Cola can't get in range to dump damage, which really messes them over. However, the Shockwave saves them, and then that slight overextension by SCZF begins the reset parade for Uzi. He jumps in, dodges just enough skills, knows his exact damage, then flashes over the poison from yes. Twitch, gets a shield at the end from Korn, and just allows the rest of the team the cleanup. I was gonna say, just before that fight, Royal Club not good when they are being dictated around. That's when the communication falters, so they decide to dictate 
worked out quite well for them. The communication's a lot easier to see that everybody's going forward than to really get back off of a fight. We'll see if they keep that pressure on. It's 20 seconds on to Dragon. Whoa! Oh, forward once again for Insect. Koro didn't have to flash out of that one. He was actually able to move and dodge out. And it looks like they may able to be, be able to rebuttal on this, but they stop it for now. Insect as well. completely on his own agenda right there. Did yeah. not have the team to follow him up. Burns Flash and Ultimate nearly kills two members of his own team. Nobody dies, but they lose a lot of control in that area. And that's exactly what I was talking about before. When, you know, if Insect's not going to be tanky enough and he jumps in, I wasn't quite expecting, you know, Flash, Flag and Drag into the Cataclysm that that would happen. But he can get blown up very, very quickly. This time around, he gets away with his life. And Royal Club still hold the lead. It's a thousand gold. It's nothing at this point. And Dragon is live. That could just completely even it up. And this is exactly what needed to happen for Uzi when he was on Vayne as well. Get the late game energy early, and they're able to control it that much more. And just an ending to our Ward story up towards the Baron area. After that equalizer, I noticed the Ward was gone. Zero saw it during the retreat and then auto-attacked it down. So they just weren't looking at their mini-map when they were yeah. walking past those wards beforehand, or sorry, their screen, and no one on the team was pinging, which is actually really concerning for their team as a whole, but with all of that, they Whoa. managed to pull ahead by 2,000 gold. Zero's on the lookout for those pink wards now. Nami, he's gonna be backing safely in the top lane now, so a bit relief for Royal Club. They know they may have the lead. They may think it's very, very even, but they're not afraid to take these fights. They weren't afraid to take the fights 11,000 gold down, so EDG has to be ready for that type of initiation. They've seen it before. Yeah, I can't wait for this game to just continue. There's a QSS on Uzi in case he gets stunned by Syndra, and it's pretty much the first defensive item I've seen him build in a really long time. Obviously against the Zed, he built it really late into the game in I think that was the second game we saw in this ridiculous series, but the yeah. scaling from Royal Club is actually really catching up now. Yes, there is a 5-1 and one Syndra yeah. on the other team, but they have a whole bunch of burst damage they can throw on Name the instant he appears, and positionally, you can be attacked by any type of flank that Royal Club puts at them. I say they have the lead right now. The gold says that too. Yeah. The kills don't, though. The so kills don't. one thing. 8-7, the turrets are tied. Yep. And we're tied up 2-2 in the best of five. So, really, such an important one. Semi-finals on the line. Of course, OMG and Najin White Shield will be playing tomorrow. The winner of this will go through to meet the winner of that one in the semi-finals. Right now, the Royal Club seem to be moving up towards Baron. Going to get some vision of that one. Pink Ward out the front is just a little bit too far out the front to spot the one in the back. And but I, they've got a scan. I have to point out the risk that EDG is going under right now. They have Koro pushing a lane so far away from Baron without teleport right now. The amount of baiting that Royal Club could be doing around Baron right now is just so dangerous. EDG can't safely check these things. They have to play very scared right now. Finally, Koro home guarding out of the base to the aid of his team. He's gonna make himself present. EDG can say stop it as much or as long as you can, but Royal Club isn't waiting for anything. So he does have to come up before that teleport's ready. 30 minutes on the clock. Could be a huge turning point for the game here. This is where we see both of these Chinese teams kind of not focusing on the turrets anymore, but getting a fight around this ring, around the Baron, where they can start to turn the tide of the game. Turrets haven't worked for EDG. Baron not so far, and Royal Club's gonna also back off of that one, making sure they have all the vision they need. See where Name can come around to these fights. He's hanging off on the side with SCZ. Yeah, very critical here, his flashes back up. So if Insect jumps on him, he would be able to retreat and probably punish Insect pretty hard. Because you look at his build, he's actually built anti-Syndra, not anti-Twitch at the moment. Mm. Most people have actually built very anti-Syndra on Royal Club with the expectation that they can blow Name up. If that fails to happen during a team fight, they are in for a world of pain. Such a tense affair. Half an hour point has now been reached. And there is the scan. Inset gets hooked, but there's no follow through. Harpoon actually not landing from Koro either. Zero and Uzi stepping forward to get rid of the pink ward on the backside. And that's fine. There's one inside the death rush though, which is keeping full vision of Royal Club at this stage. So EDG don't need to do anything silly. Yeah, you can see FCZF goes back to buy. 
a bunch more wards. Not only does he have a size two, and he's got two grains and a pink because they know that if they run out of wards, then they're screwed. So he had to get that timely recall with Home Guard Boost to get back here as quickly as possible. Royal Club was trying to exhaust EDG of wards here. You can see they're very hesitant to try an all-in initiation because they know they're against Rumble Twitch. They would rather get a catch, but it's just not being presented to them. Very close, the Orbit Deception almost three seconds off cooldown. See that being used by Nami if they can't get vision on the team anytime soon. But they already have enough wards going in. FCZ after controlling that by himself. This will give now Coral with teleport time to go down and clear this wave. But that's going to mean the pressure from Royal Club will be put on. They're going to start this Baron up. They do have quite a bit of damage. How many Three items for Stana. They're forced to back off here. Just that vision. Teleport well, coming in as well. They're not going to really able to be activating anything off of this. It was a teleport expenditure right there. That's... Yeah the main purpose of that. This time they burned the cooldown. However, that bottom lane did get shoving in the right direction, so that was not a full commit from Royal Club. That was just for the teleport. And full commitals from Royal Club have been somewhat scary. <laughs> Throughout Both the sides. of five so far. Oh, Insect. Oh, not quite landing onto him, though. This one remains tense. Still only 1,400 gold between Edward Gaming Starhorn Royal Club in game five of this quarterfinal. He calls will come in. Howling Gale just too late and in the wrong direction for the last one. But Zero off on his own once again to make sure that they've got the wards in position. But it's going to be recall time. A lot of those pinks that they uh, picked up on the last time have now been already used. I can't say enough about this game five delivering especially after yeah. how quickly and decisively Royal Club was dispatched by EDG in Game 4. And Uzi sitting apart from the rest of his team afterwards. To come back and put up this kind of a fight in Game 5 is remarkable. But with that being said, both these teams and both these team compositions stand oh, a pretty even chance of winning. Zero just recalled on top of a ward there. I don't think EDG are going to commit to this kind of thing, though. Safe pushes for now. Oh, Nami goes in, Nami! Oh, oh, they they they've him. Done it. They've done it. Nami jumps on there by the Cataclysm! Shockwave comes down as well, but they've killed off the AD carry. It might surely just turn around for Baron now. Syndra plus Twitch. QSS be damned. They get enough damage on him with the Equalizer at the end to finish off the biggest threat from Royal Club Uzi. And they burn the Shockwave. They're going to try and burn this Baron down as quickly as possible. That Shockwave being down is huge for this start. Oh, no. It's also a scattered Debating. weak that could stop them from coming in. Will they try to go over the wall here? There's some flashes still. That's clear love over the wall. Now he's in the... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He gets exploded and the Baron's dead. Cole is going to walk out, but only so far. That's a buff transfer over to you. That's a continuous fight for him now. If they can get in range. That's but that's two for one. Usul Uzi being down before. And that is a great stop on Baron by Royal yeah. Club. That rise first pick showing a fair bit of value. Who thinks to do that, by the way? Hooked over the wall at the Baron pit. I know, let's flash into the Baron pit and blow up Twitch immediately. That's exactly what Cola did. Got very close range for the bouncy spell flux. Spell flux, yeah. And just blew him up. Let's check this out one more time. Hooked, he sees Nabe. Not only did he avoid some of the damage, he just gets point blank. Name had no chance there. And the presence of mind by Cola really prevented a disaster there for Royal Club. Uzi will be saying, thank you. Thank you for that because yeah. Yeah. it was me that got caught out. And Uzi himself just getting that red buff is actually going to be going back home now. We did say these games were going to be about the AD carries, that featured matchup, but the team is still what helps win these games. And Cola, part of that, a big part of the team coming up huge. See level 16 for Uzi, so when he does get back, he'll be able to utilize a little bit more range and hopefully keep himself in a safe position. Name as well, it's got to be said for both of them. And Insect getting caught out a bit here, but only the safety of the rest of the EDG team. That's going to be an equalizer. The Monsoon comes out. Zero, the savior with that one once again. And it looks like they stave off any deaths for that, but the pressure is still on to Baron. The Twitch Cinder's really starting to show through. You and Name showing considerable threat now onto Royal Club, but still, they haven't broken the game open as of yet. And every time they open, there is yet another risk. Now, Royal Club, knowing there's a few ultimates down, try and push mid. 
This could be very interesting. DG are just off to the side. That Harley Gale will be set up to not clear love and actually they'll get him away from this one. That turret is going to take a hell of a wow. beating. Uzi might even get it. He does get it. That's a tower for Royal Club. And now they turn. They're going to get back towards Baron and get their own wards down. With Spray and Prey and Equalizer down, Royal Club has no fear. They know that the line AoE damage is no longer a threat and they can pretty much just go wherever they want. Even if Uzi gets singled out, they could just shield him up and the Cinder probably wouldn't have enough to kill him. So that failed kill actually really cost EDG. It wouldn't be surprised for them to go in with those up uh, either. Uh, you, Koro goes in a face check! A straight face check going into the river. He's gonna go down. The Rumble Ultimate had just come up as well and it looks like they're still waiting on Twitch as all that Rattata attack cannot be used here. This they're gonna so go aggressive. full four on it. They're gonna try to pull in EDG for this one. The Zanias are there to get in and kind of misdirect the damage in the plays, but will they even get the chance? Will they turn? Trying Looks like a bit of it. Oh, clear of that. Beam blown away. Back. And there is the Baron picked up by Royal Club. There's still 30 seconds until Koro comes back into this one. What are Royal Club going to do? They're going top. That's the easy tower here. I mean, they knew that EDG couldn't make it all the way into the Baron pit because of Koro's demise. And now World Club fully on the defensive. Five strong, push it top. Wow, the mental fortitude from both of these teams really showing right now. And Royal Club felt like they just needed to turn up the heat a bit. Now with a 5,000 gold lead, they have gotten Baron and they are completely in control of this game. It'll be interesting to see if EG can put up the same results from behind that Royal Club was. And that's the thing, best of five, no one remembers what you did in games one, two, three, and four. Yep. It's all about what you do in game five for you, whether you win it for your team, whether you lose it for your team. This is where legends really are made in yeah. these kind of scenarios. So far, it's Royal Club that have the lead. It's 4,000 gold. But I still the way it's back. been going, there's so much that can change. I mean, the whole team needs to be there with you as well. Uzi getting caught out. You think that's the end. The star player goes down, gets picked off. No, Cola makes a play. He had been underperforming this entire series. Yeah. But he's just sitting there in the corner, drains a three-pointer in a sense to save the team because he killed Mame. 1v3 and save the Baron buff. They can come back from that, storm through, finish another Baron off. And what this would mean for Insect, if he can break the O2 curse. That's all the story, but there's actually a fight that happened right here. They just straight up burned him away. They pushed clear love outside the smite range. That's the only thing they needed to do there because they knew a fight wouldn't happen. Right now, Tiny Ship trying to take control of the bottom lane. All of EDG have set their numbers there, except for Clear Love. We make sure the top wave is at least pushed so they can battle down here for quite some time, because it doesn't look like Royal Club is leaving anytime soon. The Baron buff still two minutes exactly oh, oh, oh. to revolve. Insect getting a little too close, not able to even do a bit of damage. They weren't willing to open on Insect because they only would settle for Uzi at this point. Now Very with true. the Bloodthirster, Janna and Orianna, if they don't catch Uzi, Uzi kills everyone. Banshee's Veil as well stopped him from being in too much trouble. Even though, you know, it wasn't an all or nothing on Insect that could have been different if they did decide yeah. to just kill off Insect. Because at this stage, Syndra is going to blow whoever up. And look at that gold difference over time. It's so close. Around about 2,000 in either direction already in this game. But it's around that 37 minute mark that things have really gone crazy. And that Royal Club after that Baron got into a bigger gold lead and they're, now they're knocking on the in him tower and there's a really small window now before you finishes his void staff he has so much ap but a lot of magic resistance has been accumulated by the entire royal club team he needs a minute to go back to base and purchase that but royal club is knocking on the door with baron and he's going now this is a small window for royal club uh, Uzi with even more safety, the Mikhails and the Quicksilver Sash we were talking about before for him to dive into these fights that he himself has been controlling on the back half of Insects engages. So you're and they're not going to give up. Time to go a bit aggressive. Once again, down the hook as well, so that relieves a bit of pressure, and it's enough pressure to drop the first inhibitor turret. They don't have many waves to work with, so it looks like they're going to stay to party for now. And it's EDG trying to force them out of the base. Uzi hanging on the right side with a nice BF shield, their Bloodthirster shield to keep himself up. In order for EDG to push them out, Twitch has to open up, which would leave a vulnerability for Royal Club to pound them down, and they just give up the inhibitor with an activity! The diving in, they're going for clear up. There is the uh, insect diving into them! Clear up gets his guardian angel, shockwave! Shockwave! Pullback! 
Yes, he's yet for fall as well. It's two men down. Whoa. Uzi goes in there. Now, mate, he's at the back, chipping away with a rat -a -tat -tat, But that might not be enough to hold them in this game. Stunt to Uzi. Quick silver sack. That could be it. Uzi. Nami going to be locked up. Nami goes down. And he's all down on Koro. They dive on him. Triple down for Uzi. It's Royal Club that do it the hard way. But go through to the semi-finals. So much win right there for Royal Club. Not only do they move on to the semi-finals, they break the insect curse and they crush EDG in game five. Peace and quiet was what wow. Uzi needed to come into this game. He took it upon himself to take a little extra time. Silence, in this case, did not cause chaos for the team. And they were able to come out on top. Being dictated around for the first half of the game, it was the initiation from Insect Top where he died for Uzi to get going as Uzi just flies into the fight. And then it gave him the confidence to do it continuously. And what a roller coaster of emotions for both of these teams. Honestly, they fought Absolutely. tooth and nail until the very end. The fifth game, the closest of them all by a long shot. And honestly, one little mistake here or there could cost them. Whether or not Cola could flash and finish off Name. Whether Koro can have the wards in the right position and not get caught out. Whether a Cinder stun lands instead of misses, all these things could have changed this series. The question was the featured matchup for that best ADC in China. And I think it was answered that Uzi stepped up quite a bit here in this best of five series. He was absolutely amazing. Honestly, there were a couple of games there, obviously, where it just didn't quite work out for him. But Name will be kind of missing rude chances there. We saw him at the end out of position, really. I mean, it's always hard as a Twitch because you know if you step just a tiny bit too yeah. far closer to the team, they're going to dive on you. They're going to go straight for you. And we mentioned as well when we saw this team composition for Name, it was a Twitch without backup. So he was really just trying to work in concert with his Syndra, but it wasn't one of those Twitch opens up with Kale on top of him and Lulu on top of him and kills the world. It was really Twitch off on his own yeah. solo mission, which Royal Club really built to counter. I mean, what is he? What is Name realistically doing here unless he's following up a Syndra stun? Because Shockwave, Jarvanol, even Uzi just hit him a few times. It's a really hard life for him. Everybody's standing out in this one as well. Cola with his Baron stop. When Uzi went down, Uzi must have just felt so distraught after that one. But Cola said, don't worry, I'm going to make a big play for you. And that could have been this game, to yep. be honest. Yep. If they'd have not got that kill, if Cola would have gone down before, you know, he took Dropping Nami, Nami yeah. That Literally, they could have done the Baron right there. And that could have been the game for Royal Cup. That was a pivotal moment in this one. So much to talk about. Such a tense game for such a long time. Absolutely incredible best of five. Yeah, and I got to congratulate Insect as well. Yeah. What this must mean to him, he broke the curse, and he didn't even have to do it on Lee Sin. He decided not to pick Lee Sin, went with another pick, expanding his jungle champion pool. That is a huge moment for him. The Jarvan was the right pick for the situation. Locked down Twitch whenever he opened up. Combo to Thoriana just right. Good job. The all-in really works for Insect. We usually see him trying to safeguard out of these fights, but sticking yeah. in with it just gave the team enough time to do what they needed. Zero coming out with some great monsoons throughout the entire time. Beautiful play all around. And yeah, I have to give also the credit to EDG while we're, while we're at it as well. 2-0 yes. down. First game, not even close. Second game, should have been closer than it actually ended up being, just be, how the early game went there and how EDG really had a good start in that one. But they they really did give it their all here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you've got to win three games, and that's just how the cookie crumbles. Next they were year. so close as well, winning those two games with the way the momentum was swinging. It just wasn't to be. Strong play from both teams. Starhorn Royal Club taking the victory in the best of five series, three to two. Right now, we're going to send it over to Shox, who is on stage with a member of the victorious Starhorn Royal Club. Thank you very much, Riv. I am standing by with who else but Uzi after securing a spot in the semifinal two years running. What a series. Uzi, explain what happened in the last moments of that game, the calls going through your team. Uh, you 
就是前面两盘打得挺好了，后来因为第三盘就发生一点小意外的话，就让整队的心态都非常差。后面就因为大家都知道最后一盘呢，就所有人都告诉我们要好点打。So in the first two games, we did pretty well, but in the third game, we met some unexpected issue that made our status not as good as, as before. And in the last game, we know it's last game, and we told ourselves that we have to come back, we have to keep our status as before to, to win the game. Can you elaborate a little bit more um, about those moments in between those games? Because we saw you being pretty distraught. 呃、uh, ，你可以讲的更多一点，就在这些具体的，当时你们做出这些决定的这些这些时刻的时候，你们当时是怎么想的吗？嗯，我自己想的就是，不不要留下遗憾嘛，因为，毕竟，毕竟很辛苦了才打到这里来。Uh, the things that I kept in my mind is that I don't leave any pity here in the World Championships because we tried really hard, we put a lot of effort to be here. Absolutely. Um, another question. Tell us about the Twitch pick. It was a surprise to a lot of us, and why did you keep it to this moment? Uh, can you talk about the Twitch pick? Why did you keep it to this moment? Uh, can you talk about the Twitch pick? Why did you keep it to this moment? Uh, can you talk about the Twitch pick? Why did you keep it to this moment? Uh, can you talk about the Twitch pick? Why did you keep it to this moment? Uh, can you talk about the Twitch pick? Why did you keep it to this moment? Uh, can you talk about I knew that EDG's ADC is pretty good at this champion, and uh, I learned, I practiced a lot, learned a lot, and realized this champion is very OP. So I leave it as a surprise in the World Championships as a game to show that. It was very strong in your hands. Talk me about living up to the semifinals now, knowing that you made the finals last year. This time, will it be Nation Shield or OMG that you'll be battling? No way. 去年你们打到了半，去年你们打到了决赛，然后今年你马上进入半决赛。你们是更希望跟 OMG 打，还是跟 Nation Shield 去打？想想为什么？嗯、呃，我更希望跟 OMG 打，因为我相信 OMG 可以赢 Nation Shield。We prefer to play with OMG because I'm confident that OMG will, be, will beat Nadin Shield. Wow. Um, Uzi, it's almost incredible to say, but it seems like you're playing even better than you did last year. How much more can we expect of you? From now on, the situation of the game, you will be better than last year. Do you think we can see what we can see from here? I hope that we I just hope that every time I can be in the world, I just hope that every time I can be in the world, I just hope that every time I can come here. I hope every time I can come here to show myself, to show my performance in front of the world in the World Championships. Well, it's been an incredible performance so far. Congratulations, we'll see you in the semi-final. And as for us, we're going to wrap things up over at the desk. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, great to hear from Uzi. And with that victory, Starhorn Royal Club advances, becomes the first team in League of Legends history to accomplish back-to-back -back semi-final world championship placements. If they win their semi-final, that will become back-to-back -back final placements. And I don't think any of it would have been possible without Uzi. We have to give this guy the praise he deserves because he hard carried a lot yeah. of those games. I am such a fanboy. Like from all the way from last year, I've been a fanboy, but now it's it's raging. It's insane because this guy put his team on his back when it really mattered, when it actually counted. The last game of the best of five, and oh my god, this guy just performed so well. This game proves that he can't do it alone because he needed his team to step up. He needed, especially in terms of the top lane, Cola had to step up there. And if he didn't make that one play at Baron, this game could have gone the other way. But I just want to give mad props to Zero. While I don't always agree with his item builds, sure, that's optional, that you can do whatever you want. But his plays, especially on Janna, were so damn good. Yeah, just as a note, EDG lost all three games. They did not ban Janna. Yeah, honestly, uh, very well played by all of this team. And, you know, we talked about what if they're going to tilt, what if the communication breakdown is going to be hard between speaking Mandarin, Korean, maybe a little bit of English. Both these teams, great mental fortitude, coming back in game five, smart picks and bans, get rid of the Lucian, pick the rise, and it finally fell into place again for them. Let's also give some credit to EDG because they struggled to qualify for the quarterfinals, first of all. They started the series 0-2. and two. They dug deep to win games 3 and 4. They pushed Royal Club all the way to 35 minutes in game 5 before Koro got caught out where he really shouldn't have been. And that just gave Starhorn Royal Club the, the advantage they needed. But the man that I feel got them to game 5 was Clearlove. 
I think in the jungle, once he stepped it up, he got his lanes working, he got his lanes rolling, but unfortunately it just wasn't enough. Right, I actually think it's really kind of poetic that Clear Love is the guy we're highlighting here. He absolutely played his, his mind out here, was a great player. Uh, for the Western fans out there who don't follow the Chinese scene very much, EDG is sort of a lot like Cloud9 in that they came together out of nowhere, some good players, and then straight to Worlds, right? Top 8 at Worlds, great performance in your first year as a team, and who else but the jungler to highlight for playing so darn well for himself. He definitely put those middle two games on his back. I completely agree. We will get back to talking about the game in just a moment. We're going to send things over to Shox, who is on stage with Starhorn Royal Club's Insec. Thank you very much, guys. Of course, we uh, had to talk to Insec as well. Congratulations. What a series. What is your take on, on the roller coaster of games that happened here right now? Insect 선수 우선 승리를 축하드리고요. 이번 정말 엄청난 경기들이 많았는데 좀 소감 좀 말씀해 주세요. 승리에 관해서. 아, 일단 제가 이렇게 5경기까지 간 경기가 꽤 많은데 그래서 오늘은 이겨서 참 아직 기분이 좋은 것 같아. Um, I had a lot of games that went up to win 5 in the past, but I'm just relieved and happy that we won. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more how that crept into your mind and then how you reset for that last game knowing it's your last chance? 5경기 들어갈 때 이제 예전에 과거에 승승 패패패 스코어를 많이 겪으셨, 겪으셨었는데 어떤 생각이 머릿속에 들어오셨나요? 솔직히 말해서 그냥 아무런 생각이 안 들어서 일단 내가 할 것만 제일 열심히 하자고 생각하고 이제 팀원들 팀원들도 자기가 각자 할거 열심히 해주길 바랬어. Um, honestly, I just empty my mind and try to focus on the game, and I just thought like I play my role and do my job, and I was hoping my teammates would do as well. And they absolutely did. Uh, is there anything you want to say to all your fans here and watching from home after that incredible performance? 이제 마지막으로 이제 엄청난 경기를 다 같이 봐주신 팬, 여기 와주신 팬들이나 이제 TV로 보실 팬들한테 한 마디 해주세요. 아, 일단 이, 이 시간까지 봐주신 분한테 감사하고 저 어, TV로 보신 팬분들도 오경기까지 봐서 재밌었으면 좋겠고 오늘도 아버지랑 친구 왔거든요. 네, 오경기까지 봐서 감사하다고. I want to say thank to all the fans who stayed up till game five, and I hope um, whoever fans who are watching through TV or through Steam that they enjoyed all the series. And also, my father and my friends came to watch, so I just want to say thanks to them as well. Well, thank you for the interview and fantastic performance. We'll see you in the semifinals, and now back to the desk. Thank you very much, Sharks, and great hearing from Insec. I actually think a great adaptation to play Jarvan in the last game of the series when Lee Sin was open and available. Uh, before we talk about some of the bigger picture, we do have a replay that I think summarizes this entire series very, very clearly. Doublelift, I know you felt particularly excited about both the Jarvan pick, which we'll get to, and then, of course, this uh, top lane extended battle. Let's roll the clip and talk over it for me. Oh, yeah, I really like Starhunt Royal Club's comp because Insec has been underfarmed. He has to camp Uzi's lane because there's so much there, so he's gonna die instantly. Every game he's probably gonna die instantly when he goes in. That's why Jarvan's such a great pick, because it locks up Nami right here for his entire team to just kind of collapse on. It really isn't enough at first, but this amazing three-man shockwave. Yeah, the shockwave is really what seals the deal. It keeps enough distance on Uzi so he can start cleaning up. Thresh overextends because the shockwave keeps him back, and then this. This is like the most ballsy, beautiful jump I've seen. Knows exactly when he has to go for the ult into our attack, jumps forward again. No AD carry should live here, but somehow Uzi knows that he can rely on his support to exhaust that. Same and he just jumps time. in. Yep. Like, and, and honestly, again, we just want to highlight how damn good Zero is. He knows his role as I'm going to protect Uzi. Uzi is the damage here. Runs exhaust every single game on Janna. You've talked about not running Ignite on that champion. Instincts by Uzi, right? Dodges away from where the ball's going to be. Same for Zero as well. Um, and in contrast, FCZF, I thought, had probably his worst game of the series here. Jumping in at really odd time. Yeah, like that first place. kill to Uzi. Missed, like, probably in total, like, seven really important flays that weren't even that hard. Let's talk a little bit about both of these teams. Of course, Starhorn Royal Club, I think they brute forced their way to a win. I don't want to take anything away from their teamwork or individual skill because it was fantastic, but Edward Gaming, they just didn't have an answer to Starhorn Royal Club's moves and positioning either around the map or in team fights. The only thing that worries me for both these teams is their Baron control because they have this way of saying, yeah, we got a big lead, let's transition that into a Baron bait, but they're done so poorly. The minion waves are really not incorporated at all into Baron baiting. The division is not deep enough. They come with maybe two pink wars and there is no oracles there. I just have to highlight Uzi's 35.04% of his team's damage is only uh, matched by Deft. He's second behind Deft, so he's just does an insane amount of damage. He's the second highest damaging percentage player at Worlds. 
points. It, yeah. It's very scary. Freak. Yeah, uh, and also, I mean, we talked about it before, but kind of bouncing off the points, kind of recapping things going on as well. The rest of his lanes, when they stepped up, his team would win. That was really big as well. We talked about Uzi in the first of Royal Club, of course, but uh, Korn finally showed up again. Didn't have a great showing in the group stage again. Only mid laner to go below 20% damage contribution. Did so here. Insec, again, yes, realizing the uh, strategic rationale of it's a Twitch. For some reason, early pick Twitch, which I know was supposed to be a steal, but getting to pick a hard engaged champion instead of his normal comfort pick there to make that happen. Cola, obviously good on Rise specifically. I don't know how much more he's going to get that champion, but stepping up for the whole team, definitely. Yeah, I completely agree. So with that victory, we now know three of the four teams who will be making the trip to Seoul. So let's actually pull up the bracket and check it out. We obviously know the top half is a Samsung White versus Samsung Blue matchup. But now we've got our first semi-final on the bottom half of the bracket with Starhorn Royal Club taking out Edward Gaming 3-2. to two. They will face either Najin White Shield or OMG and we'll figure out who their opponents will be tomorrow. With Edward Gaming's loss, that ends their run at the World Championship. And I think Nami is the player a lot of people are going to be talking about. Last year, Dade, he failed to deliver and it cost Samsung Ozon then their place at Worlds. But this year, Dade bounced back and he has just destroyed everybody. Name may be looking to do the same with a bit more comfort now that he's got some international experience under his belt. Yeah, I don't think Name uh, crashed and burned quite as hard as uh, Dade did, where his champion pool couldn't keep up and it just didn't seem to work for the team. Name was still pretty good. Like, he didn't always get out of lane, but his team fights were still fairly strong. A few misplays, certainly, but I feel like every single player at Worlds has had some misplays at some point. Um, so I don't want to be like, Name, how dare you not be the best AD carry in the world, but certainly a bit worse than we were quite expecting. Well, let's just get some final thoughts from Double if and Crepo. As we know, at least Starhorn Royal Club, they know who their opponents are, either Nigerian White Shield or OMG. In theory, they're ahead of OMG in terms of their regional seed uh, coming into Worlds. What are they looking at for tomorrow's series is obviously one of them will be their opponents. Hmm. I think OMG plays a, a very similar style to Starhorn Royal Club. EDG is kind of the outlier in terms of strategy. Uh, I think it'll be a really another explosive, amazing Chinese uh, battle brawl, bloodbath, just again if it's them. But Najin White Shield has a really good chance too. I don't think Shield will let that happen. But the, we saw, we predicted today that we'll have this clash of like five v five battles with relatively like low amount of strategy, and that came through. But Shield is like the opposite. It's such a stylistic mismatch where Shield relies so much on strategy, and then OMG is like the pinnacle of the the five v five brawl. So it'll be a very interesting match. I hope for Royal sake that OMG wins because they, then they can play against Familiar Style. If Shield takes it against the OMG, then I think Royal's in, in for some trouble. Well, Royal will need some practice against Shield Style if they want to take out one of those Samsung that squads is. as well, if the bracket plays out that way. Guys, tomorrow our final quarterfinal match will be decided as Korea's Najin White Shield takes on China's OMG. Once again, that best of five will begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central European Summer Time. And for our viewers in the Pacific Time Zone, you can catch the action at 1 a.m. That's going to do it for us today. So I'd like to thank all of our guest analysts for keeping us honest here on the desk and informed. And from myself, the casters, and the entire world's broadcast team, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow. I'm sure coming our way. It's gonna be a good day. Core on the backside, he's forced to blast into the pit. They're stuck in with Baron. A great shockwave from Unstoppable. FDCF doing what he can to get the monsoon out, but it's not healing anybody. And it will be Royal Club to pick up game number one in this quarterfinal. That's not going to be what he wanted. More kills coming up for Uzi. Oh, Picks that up onto Cordo. That no dissonance to follow, but they are going to be able to lock down the quadra kill for Uzi. But a pretty fed twitch. Everyone runs. Whoa! It doesn't have to be the best equalizer when you got Uzi with shields on him. A Royal Club move to game point. Nami not far away from this one either. Another big burst comes in. There's you getting one. This should be destructive for EDG. And EDG picks up game three. That's a 
Chuck the Waters coming out from Corn. They are able to take down FCCF. A bit of peel for the fight. EDG is coming up huge on this one. The Nexus goes down. We're going to game five. He's going for Koro. Blows him away. Gets the kill. Gets the reset. Who's he? Is he going to die? He's staying alive here. So much win for Royal Club. They crush EDG in game five.